Hi everybody, it's great to be with you all again. I hope you're looking forward to this new series called The Fruit of the Spirit. The Bible reference for that is Galatians 5 verse 22 and 23. I guess that you've been looking at some of my artwork. Um, yeah, I've spent a lot of time with God and my paintbrush during this lockdown. <laughs> Um, let me explain, the picture of the heart is in response to a prophetic challenge that was given to me on harmony. And God gave me the picture of the beauty of the flowers of the fruit of the spirit before the fruit develops and the weeds of the acts of the flesh, which Jesus will help us to disperse if we let him. The second picture shows the developed fruit in us, which will make us stand out in the crowd and which we must be confident to share with others. The lady in the hat, which she wears with confidence, will definitely stand out in the crowd, do you think? <laughs> well, today let's talk about love. Let's do this with a series of questions to consider. First of all, who is God? Well, you might say he's the creator of the universe, which is right. The heavens and the earth, sun, moon and stars, the animals, the fish, plants and insects, and all mankind. And that's amazing. And we are all made in his image, which means we have the potential to love like he does, if we choose to. Um, well, next, he's one member of the Trinity. So that's... God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three in one God. And I think that that tells us God likes to live in community in the same way that we do. Uh, thirdly, he's the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. And if we accept Jesus into our lives as our Saviour, our Father too, how awesome is that to think God is my dad? And yours too. Well, what is God? God is love. That's his nature. So he won't do anything to harm anybody. What kind of love is this? Well, not the romantic, emotional kind between two people, which doesn't always stand the test of time. People do sometimes drift apart, don't they? God's love for us is never-ending, everlasting right into eternity. It's also not the descriptive kind of love that we often refer to when we state that we love, uh, I don't know, chocolate or McDonald's or fast cars. That's fleeting, that love. Well... Our tastes and our interests change as we develop, don't they? But God's love never changes. It remains the same. So what does this love look like? Well, God's love is expressed in positive action of giving to others in need. These may even be our enemies or strangers. And at times we may be required to give sacrificially in order to help. Or sacrificially, there may be financial sacrifice, or it may mean we need to sacrifice some of our time to help, or share some of our resources. For example, lunch, if you see someone without any. Can you think of anything else you might be able to share, maybe even at school? God's love is unconditional. You can't make him love you any more or any less. It's freely given. You can't earn one's love. He loves you, whether you want him to or not. But he's always waiting for you to choose to love him back. And God's love is given with no strings attached. He doesn't give it with provisos, for example, say, if you choose to do da -di da then I'll love you. God doesn't like that. So how much does he love us? Well, the Bible tells us the extent of his love stretches as far as the east is to the west, as high as the heavens and as deep as the deepest ocean. 
that's a bit extensive, isn't it? And the quality of love is such that he gave his only son, Jesus, to live amongst us as fully human, to experience all the joys, the trials and temptations that we do, and to show us how to live, and then to become the perfect everlasting sacrifice for our sins. Yeah, our sins. So that we can enjoy a personal, close relationship with God. I find that tremendous, don't you? Mind you, God does command us to love him back with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength. This is his first great commandment. And to be obedient to him. Why? Well, so that we can be like Jesus. Love others as he did, following his example and obeying his second commandment, to love our neighbours as ourselves. We don't have to like everybody, but we are commanded to love everyone in the way we behave towards them. Why? Well, so that society will function as God planned it, everyone living in harmony with each other and with him, creating God's kingdom here on earth. So, how do we get this love? Well, it's given to the followers of Christ by the Holy Spirit. The seeds of this are planted in our hearts, and if we let Jesus to help, he will nurture them, so they will grow and bear much fruit. We can't do this on our own. Jesus says, I am the vine, the true vine, and we are the branches. See if you can find the Bible reference for that comment. If we remain in Jesus, that is, that is to continue to believe and follow him, then he will remain in us, and we will grow to become like him and bear much fruit. Our love received from him will spread out into society, helping God's kingdom to grow in this world. This is our purpose as Christ's followers, to share his love and his gospel story. And we will stand out as being different and our love will be noticed. So what does this love look like? Well, it's not proud, rude or self-seeking. It doesn't envy or boast. Love is slow to anger and doesn't keep a record of wrongs. That is, we don't bear grudges against anyone. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love takes no delight in evil but rejoices in the truth. Love protects others. Love always trusts. Love is hopeful. Love perseveres. See if you can find a Bible reference for that quote too. These are the qualities of God found in Jesus and given to us as believers when we receive the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Spirit works in us, these characteristics of God's love will become more apparent in us. So can this take love be taken away from us? No. Romans 8.39 states, There is no spiritual power or any created power that will ever separate us from God's love. And John 15.14 says, if we remain in Christ, he will remain in us. So to conclude, if we do not act in love, but only talk about it, then our actions don't show it, and we're not being sincere. Jesus cursed the fig tree for giving false impression of itself and bearing leaves without fruit, giving the impression that it was a healthy tree. Can you find that Bible reference? We're not to give false impressions of ourselves, but always bear fruit, even when life is not necessarily being kind to us. Don't just give lip service to love, but show it in the way you behave. Let's not be like the fig tree, only producing leaves. Let's work with Jesus and bear much fruit to share 
even when things in life aren't going quite the way we'd like them to. My challenge to you when you get back to school is this. Try to be kind to someone who's been really mean to you. Try to understand what makes them be mean because God didn't make them that way. Maybe invite them to join you in a game you're playing or sit with them at lunch or choose them to be in your team. A difficult challenge, I know. But it's easy to love someone you like. I challenge you to take it that bit further and try and love someone you don't like. Go now and love everyone unconditionally, no strings attached, the way Jesus loves you. Have fun and God bless you. Goodbye.